Hello everyone, uh, it's a deep honor, thank you for watching. Welcome to the SDG Lead. Our motto is we learn from each other through sharing stories, best practices and experiences. My name is Karina Rachenko, I am from Ukraine. As a founder of uh, the Partnership for Advancing Innovative Sustainability Project, I am happy today to host the conversation with an amazing change maker from Zambia. Uh, his name is uh, uh, Gift Chense, uh, co-founder and uh, director of uh, Circus Zambia, uh, the first social hub of its kind uh, aimed at tackling injustice through empowering youth and equipping them with uh, uh, circus uh, academic and life skills. In 2018, he was awarded by Queen Elizabeth II for his work and I decide to transform the lives of disadvantaged young people. A gift, it's so nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for having me, Karina. That was a yeah, wonderful introduction there. <laughs> I'm flattered. <laughs> I thank you uh, so much for joining, and I think Gift, uh, it's not the chance, by chance that uh, you know, your name is uh, Gift, uh, because you are really gifting people uh, in your community the hope uh, to improve uh, lives. Uh, so it's, uh, I'm enormously excited to learn from you and to hear about your journey. Uh, to begin with, uh, could you please tell our viewers uh, about your past? How did it begin and uh, in which countries you are currently active? As well, you, uh, you may probably highlight uh, the key scopes uh, of your current activities and maybe some future plans. Uh, uh, do you have uh, um, the presentation? Yes? Yes, I, I, I've got something. I've got the presentation. So, you know, they say a picture says a thousand words. So, oh yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, again, my name is, is Gift. Um, I'm like, I'm in Zambia now, um, uh, somewhere in Southern Africa. Uh, so I, I work with Circus Zambia here. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, I'm going to share a video to just give uh, people um, an idea on how Zambia looks like, you know, also where the, the environment we work in as well, you get um, uh, an idea of what Seca Zambia is all about. We come from a compound that is known for drugs and criminality. It's been a disaster. Young people living on the street. Seca Zambia is a non-profit. We mostly focus on less privileged places. Seca Zambia equips young people with life skills, social skills, educational support and job opportunities through SECAS. We grew up as hyper kids, always active, doing acrobatics. We wanted to change the image of the compound. You can see that everybody is angry to do something about things that are going on. There's just so much energy and so much power within the community. My name is Gif Chansa, I'm 27 years old, and I'm a circus performer. Smile, what's the problem? <laughs> yeah, so Seca Zambia uses the holistic approach. Um, so uh, we have uh, three areas. We've got uh, the body, mind, and so, and we have uh, a Sekas company. Sekas Zambia is a social enterprise, uh, you know, that equips, again, young people with uh, Sekas skills, social skills, life skills, um, uh, educational support, and provides them with job opportunities. Um, so the, the, the performance aspect is the social enterprise, is where we generate our income, um, and you know the mind uh, like i said we use the holistic approach so uh, we the young people that is participate uh, in programs of seca zambia get opportunities to go back to school uh, so in the mind program we support mostly young people that 
Yeah, so, so we have three areas, the body, mind and soul. And so the body is where we bring young people and, you know, they go into like a physical journey. Also, this is a journey if they want to become performers in the future. But along the way, they learn uh, important skills on like trust, communication, team buildings, and learning how to uh, work with each other. And the mind, we send most of the young people back to school. So we have, I think, about 30 young people that are in the scholarship uh, program. And, and the so mostly we talk about SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. And so this is more about issues that young people face in the community. And now because we have SDGs, we're trying to localize and say, and say to young people, these are global problems in the way. And this is how other young people are doing. And this is, you know, we try to find um, the, the local problems and, and what that means uh, in, in our context. And we try to um, solve those problems. And so in the SOAP program, usually, like, we, we've got projects like Crowns for Condom, which talks about HIV preven prevention and S at our sexually productive health rights um, and we have you, you know we are talking about gender equality we are having programs on wash uh, nutrition and, 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 and these other things so those are more like problems that uh, actually young people uh, face uh, mostly um, in Chivoria so our target groups are based in a township called Chivoria uh, Chivodia Garden and Karingalinga, but most of us, most of the co-founders co of Seca Zambia, we grew up uh, from Chivodia apart from uh, one person. Um, uh, and so, you know, like always the, the community is known for drugs and criminality and also it's the most uh, vulnerable place, I would say, in, in uh, Zambia. Because also when you go there, you find, you know, there is, I think, about 40,000 people and 80% are young people. They are they, 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 um, below age of 18. So it's, it's a really um, hyper uh, or, or active community. Yeah, so Seca Zambia is more like a hub. It's where it's, it's a safe space for many young people. So they just come here, you know, they, we, um, every Saturday we bring guest speakers to speak to young people. We've got um, different activities going on and uh, you, we have a library where they can access computers and things like that, books to borrow. Um, and we have a training space um, for them and we have just projects that just require us to sit down and discuss and, you know, share ideas so we we like saying we we are a hub like that because we've got different activities going on yeah so these are mostly what i was talking about um this was the newspaper shared and then we, those are some of the uh, things on like sdgs we are focusing on um i'll, I'll go quickly and so the circus company, we, we've, uh, yeah, with the circus company, we've performed um, in many places outside Zambia, outside internationally and locally as well. So um, let's see. So we've done shows like Treasure in Chivodia. This was the first show that we ever, show we ever did in the township in 2015. The show was inspired by our, our journey to go back where we, we, we came from. Um, and, you know, um, inspire young people uh, and tell them that, you know, like, even though, you know, we, we, we live in such environment, we can still, um, I think we can still thrive, you know, we can still uh, aspire to become what we want to be. Um, and Discover Home, uh, this show is inspired by the, the, the alchemist uh, uh, Paul, Paul Kaulo about, you know, like people wanting to go out to look for treasure, but actually treasure is, is back home. And, um, and then the, the, the Discover Home, we, did, we toured in the USA in 2016 um, in New England. Um, it, it was mostly outside 
uh, it wasn't in theaters, it was outside. And then in 2017, we did The Boy That Announced uh, the Windmill. We went to UK and Ireland. Also, we've participated in a lot of festivals, like Awaji Festival in, uh, in Japan, um, Ethiopia, uh, in Africa, and um, Zimbabwe, um, and other places. So, Mostly we say because we are artists, you know, uh, like we are artists, we love what we, what we do. So we try to incorporate and to use art as a tool to engage uh, with the community, with young people um, and everything. Yeah, so we like using the creative tool. I think, yeah, I think my presentation ends here. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for this inspiring presentation. And uh, the spectrum of your activities uh, is so wide uh, and uh, it's really inspiring and uh, empowering. So you started in Chibolia and then moved mm. to Lusaka, uh, the capital of Zambia. Yeah, so Lusaka is actually a suburb. Or, uh, I mean, Lusaka is, is a city and we are in a community. So a community or a township is a place within um, Lusaka city. Uh, but now, yes, our offices are more, we're not, they're not based in Chivoria, but we've got like smaller things, uh, smaller place in the township where young people can just go. But outside Chivoria, we have, that's where the hub is. Um, because also we, we, find, we find that it's exciting for young people to like go from Chivoria to like another, another space. And they're always looking forward to that because they, they feel like, you know, there'll be a bus that would come and pick us. And, um, you know, they, on, on Fridays and Saturdays, is um, many young people that usually come through. And so in general, now you have uh, attended more than 14 countries. Yeah, yes. Wonderful, yeah, with your yeah. performances. And yes, with, how yeah. many people get involved uh, but, uh, by approximation in your projects, in your community? Yeah, so we, you know, we directly reach the young people that access our premises, uh, mostly about 100 young people. But through, like, you know, projects that we do, through interventions and performances, we reach mostly um, I think about 6,000 or 5,000 people annually. Um, and yeah, this is also based because when we have a project, we like, would, like work with our young people, but also we go in, in schools, we go in, uh, in, 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 we work with other NGOs as well and reach many young people like that. Wonderful, and when this project was founded? Uh, so, yeah, Seca Zambia was founded in 2015. Um, uh, we were officially registered, I mean, I guess, in 2015 as well. Uh, we just started. We, we, we just started. We were not, like, oh, these were all the things that they were telling us. Oh, now you need to register. Now you need to have the constitution. Now you need to, be, to do this, to enable to, to do uh, something professionally. Uh, also, like being accountable um, and other things. So it's been a journey um, that you know, a journey throughout where you you're just learning on how to do things. Uh, you have studied acrobatics uh, in China and uh, in the Netherlands, uh, and now you are pursuing uh, the bachelor's uh, degree in development studies uh, at the University of Zambia. Am, mm -hmm. uh, am I right? And what is the role of uh, uh, self-development here? I mean, to keep up with this change, to get not only acrobatics professional knowledge, but also knowledge uh, in project management, uh, to run your organization and to develop, to keep up growing? Yeah, no, I guess, um, I, I guess for, for, for me, like, you know, self-development has mostly been also because of the changes that like you're saying, you know, everything is just volatile. Like we started with acrobatics and then, and then we're, we're like, okay, you need to write emails, you need to write projects. Um, and then, and then I felt like, 
always you're you're drowning and always you want to come up so you you are on on top of of things and so like that i i think i try to yeah yes push myself so yeah you know i i then after i did the we did the trainings then i did the short course um uh, for project management at the public school here and then i was like actually i can you know maybe just start so so study so that i've got like a degree um in uh, in the former school uh, and i i enter the university of zambia so so now i'm 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 doing work and and schooling as well it's a uh, challenging but it's fun uh, it's so great uh, that so many fields are covered uh, and I think uh, many fields will be added uh, because the hub, uh, as you've mentioned, is really very comprehensive, numerous directions uh, and should uh, keep up growing. Yeah. Uh, because uh, Zambia is also about tackling the stereotypes uh, and outrooting the prejudgment uh, existing, for instance, in Google, in Google when some people could read about Chibolia uh, as a Christian criminalized place uh, uh, so you are uh, pursuing this image of creativity friendship uh, and community uh, trying to get people acquainted uh, with the people from uh, this region uh, from your region and your community in terms of uh, creativity great development uh, so my question is how to start tackling stereotypes here uh, to get out of the comfort zone how to start and build this positive image uh, and to unleash uh, this creativity cooperation communication and dialogue yeah no i yeah i i guess you know many uh, change makers out there or many young people or people should just start and and you know like um i guess when we started uh, like we wanted to change the image of 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 the township and uh, we didn't we didn't know the best way than what we already knew like to perform and um, so we found that as a unique space for us but also if you see we didn't have any like writing skills we didn't have any many skills so we had to partner with um, many people so that we can reach that goal so many young people should you know don't do things in isolation because then it doesn't work because maybe you don't have all the needed skills so you need to find the right expertise um for you to grow because this is where the the ideas will come from this is these are the people that will challenge you and these are the people that will drive you to reach um good higher heights i guess uh, you've mentioned very important components, the golden rule for, of not staying in isolation, not being alone as really teamwork matter, especially mm. now in online times uh, when uh, regardless of frontiers, uh, uh, we uh, even have this chance to communicate uh, and to talk and uh, people watching us uh, can learn from this. So it's really great to presume this use-to-use uh, -use, uh, dialogue. Uh, and yes, uh, yeah, speaking definitely. Uh, speaking about the other challenges that you faced, uh, were there uh, other barriers uh, on your path uh, and uh, uh, how uh, to overcome them? Yeah, you know, like I think personal barriers were always uh, like not feeling enough. Like, so you can see that even in my development, I keep always going back to school. Um, and trying to like feel like, okay, I can do this because I've never since we started i've never felt like i i can do this so i always feel like feeling behind so i need to push myself so people need to push themselves up um and you know like that was a challenge um on its own in in the way but also there were barriers as well like you know you you, you, you no not everyone takes you seriously because i i remember we, we we would go to many offices and people would be like, who are you? What do you want? Like, like they don't take you seriously. Um, and it's like, it's really difficult, but you need to be consistent and you need to like uh, push through on, um, on what you want. Yeah, I, 
I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I, I think for me, it's, it's, it's those things, you know. So uh, keeping up going regardless of challenges uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, knocking in the doors, uh, even if they are closed, because without yes. this, uh, the stereotypes would not be changed uh, because the voice uh, uh, would not be heard properly. And uh, what you are doing is amazing. I wish one day uh, I would be able to see uh, it live uh, and also our viewers uh, uh, would probably one day get this chance uh, because it's really fascinating in terms of a uh, combination, wonderful combination, even magic of great energy and uh, simultaneously as a cultural component. Uh, because what, what you are doing is also about uh, public diplomacy, people-to-people uh, -people diplomacy, connecting mm. borders uh, through frontiers. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, there are also some traditional components. Uh, mm. uh, do they often include it? Uh, I mean, which are very typical to uh, Zambia and arts yeah you know always when we go out to perform we have to like look zambian so sometimes when you see us we, we're so colorful and we use um you know chitenge fabrics even maybe they might not be zambians per se we try to use them because they're like used generally by a lot of people here um they use um, those materials so we try to bring them with us I remember also in 20, I think 2017 or 28, I'm not sure, 2018, 2019, when we did the tour, we brought cooking sticks um, in, in our show, but also the, the kind of shows that we want to put up are like ins inspirational shows, you know, like the boy that announced the, the windmill is, is, a, is a story inspired by a boy in Malawi that changed his community because of his uh, innovation. And, and, and loving uh, to read. So these are the, are the kind of stories we want to share because we find them um, inspiring. And, uh, you know, they touch young people and young people when they see our shows, they don't go back um, the same. Actually, sharing stories here is so meaningful uh, to preserve mm -hmm. also this cultural heritage and this wonderful clothing because uh, I'm so in love with uh, uh, these traditional uh, African fabrics. Uh, it can be yeah. so stylish, so fascinating. Uh, even previously, uh, I talked to, to the modern designer woman from Tanzania and she talked about uh, how to uh, include these uh, traditional fabrics into modern mm -hmm. So, so I think uh, uh, through uh, your performances, uh, there is also great promotion of uh, designers, uh, of uh, local uh, producers. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, why did you choose arts uh, to communicate the values to young people? Uh, why it's uh, uh, more efficient uh, than other tools? Uh, because the key line here is arts, and then mm. it's like uh, um, some other components are in line with this uh, key line. Uh, like yeah. education, uh, other kind of skills uh, creation. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I guess, you know, um, like I think we could have used any any uh, other form of communication, but I think we chose arts because um, you know it's it's fun as well as as, as like it allows uh, you know self um, expression and 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 people feeling um, feeling to be themselves in a way. Um, I, I always say this, like you know, like also I. You know, I always felt very differently every time I performed or every time I, I, I go on stage. When I come out, I come out uh, as a different person. And I'm like, for us also in the community, um, like when we perform outside our community, because if you say you are from Chivodia, then people don't take you seriously because they, f they think negatively. But as soon as you go on stage, you perform, then all those con connotations are gone and suddenly you are a superstar and everybody wants to like hang out and everybody would want to take pictures and th that builds your self-esteem. And it, 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 yeah, I think that was also a key, you know, like uh, engaging young people um, from the same background as us to feel the same 
feeling because that would give them confidence, that would boost their self-esteem and, you know, they would feel that you, you can then conquer the world because you've got something that is powerful, I guess. It's uh, amazingly powerful and uh, I'm even currently thinking how many SDGs uh, uh, you are targeting, as you've mentioned, reducing inequalities and also good health, uh, not only in terms of uh, awareness rising and uh, uh, some campaigns, but also uh, circus is very uh, good uh, sporting form for young people uh, to get yeah. acquainted with sport and uh, to keep healthy uh, and uh, as well as other education and I think peace also, partnership, all the spectrum, most of the goals. Yeah, no, also it works for, it's, it's a mobilization too because all the young people want to participate because it's fun and, you know, when they participate in this and we can sit down and talk about other things as well that they go through and you can break down components that they don't understand and you can like convey it in a fun way that is not more like a traditional way of teaching like pen and paper uh, and the board in front. It's like now you need to listen, but you can do it in a, in a fun and engaging way and, and, yeah, and young people feeling like they, you know, they're, they're doing something that is fulfilling and that's what we want. Absolutely, this kind of uh, informal connections uh, mm. are really are more uh, supposed to last longer. Uh, formal education has positive signs, but when it is informal, it is more likely to be recorded on this emotional level, this wonderful connection and magic. And uh, yeah. uh, as we talked, uh, you started locally and then you are moving global. Uh, currently, uh, you have uh, the wonderful record of your performance uh, uh, also your performances uh, were viewed uh, and among other uh, uh, people uh, by Pan Ki-moon, uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Bill Clinton and uh, many other uh, uh, world leaders. Uh, uh, what is the key in your opinion uh, to Zoom uh, to somehow scale your activities to grow while starting locally with first steps uh, and then uh, go higher higher and higher yeah I, I i guess i guess we all need to start small you know we know we all need to start small and and i i, I guess through collaborations through like all these um networks that you build and then you end up uh globally you end up uh, becoming globally because then people um who listen to you because they they've heard about you from someone and they, maybe they love your story, they love what you're doing, and they want you um, to visit them because, you know, you, you bring um, some, like, positive vibes. I don't know how to put it. Yeah, I, but I guess we all need to start small in the way because then uh, also if you start small and in, like, one year you're still surviving two years and people believe in you and they're like, okay, uh, you know, the people that, start something but they're not there to stay and the people that start something and they're there to like stay and maybe i guess those are the people everybody wants to connect with absolutely so these connections uh, the loneliness road uh, starts from the first step and it's uh, uh, yeah. very meaningful how you describe uh, uh, your uh, decisions uh, uh, your spiritual i would say motivation to rise this uh, uh, step uh, as your wonderful mission in this universe very inspiring and uh, in 2018 uh, mm -hmm. you've been awarded uh, by the queen and received the award uh, how uh, did you feel this uh, uh, moment uh, and what was the follow-up of this uh, award? What were your initial emotions? Uh? Yeah, no, I mean, um, there were so many things happening, but it was really an amazing experience just to be part of the Queen's Common Wealth Trust and like, you know, like meeting also these like global uh, leaders, young people that are like making positive change in their community was like really uh, motivating and encouraging and like, like just, you know, listening to them speak as well. Like, uh, like it was, it's, it was fulfilling. It was uh, like, okay, 
it was more magical. Um, and like I remember specifically when when they you know they were calling our names to go uh, meet the queen, uh, and you know I, I and then they called my name and then I went there and then then she said how do you do like is it you are you the circus guy and I'm like yeah. Uh, but you know, she like speaks, but I don't speak because I don't know what to say. I'm just like, ah, and, and the, whole, the whole thing went so quick afterward. Um, afterward, it just went so quick, but um, like, like I'm always saying, I'm like processing and I'm like still processing. It's, it's just like things that I will never, I guess, understand uh, fully, but it was just a, an amazing experience to be there. Wonderful, and uh, you absolutely deserve uh, to be there, keeping in mind your amazing scope uh, and uh, approaches uh, and this uh, follow-up uh, in cooperation. As I see uh, the uh, picture uh, of the circus uh, with Prince uh, was also a part of the follow-up, right? Yes, yeah, no, yeah, so, so the, those are the things that came up as well. Um, like uh, Prince Hadi was uh, in Zambia doing other things as well, and then we and then he came here. We met with him with other young leaders across uh, Southern Africa, and we hosted him at Seka Zambia. And it was you know an amazing uh, opportunity for us, also because our organization you know like is like from Chibodia is is like. A lot of people here say don't go to that place, and and it's it's an organization that was like visited by the prince, and yeah, it, it was uh, it was amazing, and like it just opens many doors and like many uh, possibilities. It definitely brought many young people, <laughs> so we had a lot of young people were like, oh, now we need to like just have many programs because now we have many young people that have come. But also, like, just, like, visibility to uh, Seca Zambia as, a, as an organization. It's very important uh, that the youth-powered projects uh, uh, get uh, uh, listened to, and uh, uh, this kind of visibility is also very powerful to attract uh, other people to come to tell about what you are doing. Mm, and uh, yeah. uh, it's very important this media coverage uh, and uh, also this kind of interconnectivity with the world leaders, uh, with uh, media representatives, celebrities, and so on uh, to get. Louder. Uh, very yeah. inspiring. And uh, uh, speaking about the future of uh, SECAS, uh, because uh, uh, here we talk about innovations, uh, uh, we change our social structures, our way mm -hmm. of learning, and other arts field. Um, even shorter, uh, some of the uh, performances uh, are given online <laughs> and uh, different uh, ways uh, of uh, uh, presentation. Uh, how do you personally see uh, what the f uh, future of uh, the circus uh, look like? What will be there uh, from today and what will not be probably there uh, which we can face today, which we can see? I think definitely we'll be working with young people in the next five years and definitely, you know, our vision is to uh, enable young people to become change makers. And so when we touch one, one, one human being and we feel like they're fully changed, that is, uh, that is the vision, that is the goal. Uh, you know, personally, maybe I'll be gone. Uh, I, I'll be gone from here, but I, I would, really, I would love for it to continue and, you know, to still be a creative space for young people, um, for in, uh, creativity and innovation in, in the way we approach um, this kind of work. And, yeah, I just hope uh, it will be here. And I'm, I'm sure of that because I, I'm sure that it, it will be here because I can see it in some of our youngest members, you know, and their attitudes and, and the way they are coming up that uh, they would still, like, continue.
Absolutely. So keeping up with the circus traditions uh, in ge generations to come. And I hope one day on this planet, uh, the 500 years uh, a celebration of the existence of your circle uh, will be and then and then. So this like uh, uh, interconnectivity of generations of traditions mm. of ideas. Uh, it's very important if we speak about even traditional circus, uh, uh, which perform uh, for about uh, uh, half hundred of years, uh, uh, there is uh, su such um, interconnections. Yeah, 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 hope so. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful uh, conversation, enormously inspiring, and uh, I thank you so much for sharing enormous love uh, to what you do and uh, how you keep it up, uh, put it all up together to give us uh, uh, this very clear and quite comprehensive pictures uh, of uh, your activities, uh, your philosophy, uh, which is also very important to reveal um, to uh, some kind of support uh, other change makers uh, to continue going regardless of all the odds. Uh, and uh, uh, last but not the least, as we usually have a traditional rubrics, uh, uh, what would be your message to the world leaders uh, and people watching us uh, to reveal your motivation and uh, to give them a kind of uh, life hack and advice? Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know where I read this, but uh, I would say to many young people out there, don't wait for Godotto. Don't wait for the, you know, we, all, you, we intend to wait for the right time, but there's never like a right time. I think you just have to start because when you start, that's when uh, things start opening, opening up. And when you start, you need to be then consistent in like what you're doing. It doesn't mean you, you shouldn't be creative or innovative, but consistent in like pushing what whatever you 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 want to push and and people you'd be surprised how many people are listening and how many people would come to you afterward wonderful message thank you so much for it i hope that it will be heard and once mm. again we can meet uh, live uh, at the performance uh, of your wonderful and uh, impressive circus uh, thank you so much for watching uh, give chance uh, uh, Partnership for Advancing Innovative Sustainability Project. Uh, see you soon. Good luck. See you soon. Thank you so much, Karina. Thank you. Thank you.